Hey everyone, it's that time for Throwback Thursday where I go back in time and revisit my favorites from about three years ago. So today we are going back to May 2011 to revisit my favorites from then and find out if they're still around and still favorites. So I've written down what I liked back then. I have stuff to show you, so let's get to it. Except, I always say that and then I do an except. I'm so excited, a few YouTubers are starting to do this as well. Some of them are doing Throwback Thursday, some Flashback Friday, whatever you wanna call it. I really, I don't wanna call this a tag, but I really hope that this kind of video takes off because before I made videos, I was a fan and still am a fan of watching so many YouTubers and my favorite videos up there, right up there with what's in my purse videos are favorites of the month. And I really want to know what happened to all those favorites that we all come up with 12 times a year. So hope this takes off and more people do them. So Ocean Potion Sunscreen was the first thing that I talked about back in May of 2011 and I still love it. I don't have any on hand because I have cleaned out all of my sunscreen. Sunscreen really only lasts for about a year and then it's a good idea I personally have decided to at the beginning of every summer e season get rid of the stuff from last year and purchase all new stuff so i've cleared everything out haven't bought anything new but definitely will be buying the ocean potion sunscreen probably this week we've just had a lot of rain in may and so i haven't had the need for like full body sunscreen haven't sat up by the pool yet this year um the next thing was the avino positively smooth shave gel which kind of forgot about um I know exactly what happened is I got this stuff and then redid our bathroom and it's, it has it allegedly a rust, it was made out of metal and the bottom is supposedly rust proof but it's not and I didn't want the can marking up my new tile and so I started using the EOS shave cream. Um, they come in different flavors or scents. This one is pomegranate raspberry which is a very nice scent does the job, but um, is not quite as effective as the Aveeno. So I think I'm just going to go back and when this runs out, I have about this much left, get the Aveeno and just store it upside down on its plastic lid and then everybody is happy. I also used to use the Boots Number no. 7 Protect and Perfect Beauty Serum. I recently completely changed my skincare. I'm really not using any serums right now. I started using a Colleen Rothschild salicylic treatment in the evenings and I always follow up with the um, number nine face oil which I wouldn't really call a serum per se so the only serum I'm still really using is the Murad Rabbit Age Spot and what is this called pigment lightening serum which I'm almost out of and as soon as that's out I'm gonna order some more Colleen Rothschild products so serums have just really kind of toned down what I'm putting on my face and it's not a bad product just I think Part of um, the problem with what I do is that I'm constantly testing new skincare and so it's hard for something to stick around for three years and that did not. The Chanel Soleil Tandis Chanel bronzer was sent to me actually by a subscriber named Kayla and who's in Houston and I loved it and I wanted it to work for me so much but it kept breaking me out. It just, I'd stop using it and my skin would clear up and I'd bring it back out and I'd use it to contour and boom, get the acne just literally like stripes, just exactly where I applied the bronzer. So I think it's the rose scented perfumes that they put in the Chanel skin products that my skin does not like. So no more Chanel bronzer for me. Really not a fan, haven't really branched out into trying any more cream bronzers. I know Tom Ford makes one, Hourglass makes one. I just don't love cream products for the face. I never have very good luck. The two bronzers I'm currently using are not particularly budget friendly. I apologize. One is a gift, um, so it was easy on my budget, but it was it is the Tom Ford Natural, what is this called? Tom Ford Bronzing Powder. It's a big old thing, and I use that all over my face every day lately, for those of you who have commented on how bronzy I'm looking. And then the other one, which I love, 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 and is also a lot more budget friendly is the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I'm gonna talk about it in my favorites video, which will be my next video, but this dust, sometimes, you know, I'm swishing around with a big fluffy brush and the dust from it has gotten on my lips. It's sweet, like, it tastes like sugar. I, I don't advise eating this, but you might be able to. I'm just saying, if some powder should happen to la land on your lips, give it a lick. I talked about the Real Techniques brushes, still love them, have added a ton to my collection. The one that I use every day without fail is this big, bot, big boy. 
It's um, the, I think it's the, yes, the multitask brush. And there are many things it can be used for, but I use it for stamping on my blush. Love it. Love, love, love. This and the expert face brush couldn't live without either one of those, I don't think. Equate Rejuvenating Micro Exfoliating Cleansing Cloths. Those are the Walmart version of, I think, the Olay Cleansing Cloths. Since the filming of that video, changed up my skincare routine just a little bit. And I'm not really using any wipes at all to get my makeup off. What I am using is the Colleen Rothschild Radiant Cleansing Balm and taking it off with a muslin cloth. This is the um, Colleen Rothschild version. It's just this. Just took it out of the wash. Probably should be ironed, but I'm not going to. So it's a little wrinkly and um, very nice. Much softer on the face than a washcloth. Next, on my favorites from May 2011, was the Estee Lauder Double Wear Zero Smudge Lengthening Mascara. So, I go through mask quite a bit. I have had a love, love relationship with many mascaras since then. The one that is currently high on my list, as you all know, is the um, Kevin Aquan The Volume Mascara. It's not the cheapest mascara in the world, but for reasons that I do not understand, is the only one that does not end up flaking down here or smudging throughout the day. Never have to look in the mirror again to check. So the peace of mind is worth the $30, but when this wears out, which is soon, I am probably going to explore some less expensive options, but I really do like this one a lot. Also on my list was the Estee Lauder Double Wear Lip Pencil and Spice. I know I got that as a gift with purchase, and... It was okay. I'm not a huge lip liner user anyway. Um, if I am going to use a neutral lip liner like I have on today, that just worked out. I didn't plan that. The one that I do reach for is the Too Faced Perfect Lips in, it looks like this. I think it's just nude. Yes, perfect nude. Um, it's a twist up and um, it's very soft and very creamy and very long wearing. Okay, this is still a huge favorite of mine, although I have not used it at all this year. This is the NYX Blush in Terracotta, one of the first NYX blushes I got, as you can see by the packaging. And this is great on tan skin, which I do not currently have. Um, but when I do my self tanning, which I need to get on, this stuff is my favorite. This might be my favorite summer blush, if not my most favorite, it's close second to NYX Pinched. These two, love these blushes. They are awesome. They have a bit of a, I'll do the terracotta since this is the one I was talking about. It's dried up a little bit. It's not as, this is the same blush from three years ago. Not as smooth and buttery as it used to be, but it's that really warm coppery color and it shears out really nicely, but it has a lovely satiny finish to it. Gives you a nice gleam on the cheeks and would actually probably make a great little eyeshadow too. Just a quick tip, if you get blushes or eyeshadows that get kind of dry on the top, just take a disposable, a disposable mascara wand and kind of, or a clean one and rub it and kind of scrape off that top layer and you're back in business. It's all good again. The next thing that I liked in May 2011 were the um, NYX, speaking of NYX, the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencils. I don't know anyone who still uses those. I loved the idea of them and they were very budget friendly, but if you didn't pack on a ton of eyeshadow on top of it, they creased like crazy and they were hard to sharpen. And I think most people I know have replaced them with the Maybelline 24 hour color tattoos. They come in so many colors, maybe not quite as many as the NYX pencils do, but they give you that nice base on which to put on shadow and they're a lot more workable. They last a lot longer. I don't know why I smelled that. This is one of my favorites. I think this was a limited edition, pure nude, but you know, you know the drill, all the colors. They are awesome. I talk about Velcro rollers, I guess, in that video. I don't really use them as much as I should. Um, I've gotten lazy with my hair, so, but I still like them. I like the concept and when I do use them, on clean, dry hair, I just take my flat iron and run it over a section to heat up the hair a little bit and then wrap it around. Just a little tip. I'm. This is so funny. I mentioned in my favorites, Lola Marie Seven, who I still love, still adore, and when her videos do pop up, I those are one of the first ones that I watch, and it's funny that she's. I'm mentioning her now because she hadn't been making a lot of videos, and just recently she started making them again. So yay, so happy to see Jess back on YouTube. 
Last two items. I talked about the Method Daily Granite Cleaner. I still love Method products, and here's my Method Daily Granite Cleaner. It smells great. It's um, it's good for beyond granite. I mean, you can use it on pretty much any hard surface, but I would I I keep it for granite because it's kind of expensive and it's a little bottle. All the Method products that I've used are awesome, and I still use them to this day. And then the last thing I had on there was variety puzzle books that you could, um, I brought them on the plane with me a lot when I would travel, like word searches and puzzle kind of books. And I've really gotten into my iPad since then and I don't really do pen on paper or puzzles as much as I, like I never do them. I just play on my iPad instead. And now I'm really into the hidden object. I love those hidden object um, mystery type um, games on iPad, which is slightly geeky, but that's me. So anyway, those were my favorites from May 2011 and the things that I'm using instead of, if I'm not still using them. I love doing these videos. If you enjoy watching them, please let me know. One last thing, if you like this, this is not an original creation. I shamelessly copied a tutorial from Sharon Farrell and I will link that below. She made did a real neutral eye and then had a real acid bright purple, which I tried to approximate as much as I could, toned it down a little bit to make it a little more wearable for daytime, but not a lot. So if you like this, let me know. If you really like this, you'll be glad to know you're going to see it in the next video because I'm going to film my favorites for May 2014 right after this. So I will see you next in that video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.